live here. Well, not really live. I'm recording here on the Duke City Lounge. Thank you so much for joining me again on Audacity. Well, Skype had some issues. Just couldn't get connected to talk to you. I wanted to do a live, but there were some weird, wacky issues, so I couldn't really get connected. So it started really odd. So I just said, screw it. We're going to do this right here on Audacity, recording it right now. So, yeah, here we are. Ah, so don't worry. Hopefully everything will be work out. We will have this live next week. Hopefully on my brand new, well, we'll be on my brand new computer. And um, we will be doing that stuff and some more interesting stuff. Hopefully my idea for it. And um, I want to do something on the show is try to get this on live on YouTube so I can have this and have live call-ins as well on YouTube because I really want this show to grow. And I think this show will grow if I have a chance to do that. Don't worry, I will still put the recordings on TalkShoe uh, as well. What, like this one, I will put that on there. But the main plan, I want to see if I could do it. I want to see if I can somehow get this show on YouTube so I can broadcast it live on TalkShoe and have phone calls. That sort of thing. So I want to hear the people's thoughts. That is what I want to do. And hopefully with my new computer, maybe somehow I can finagle a way to do it. Anyway, let's get into the main stories here. And there are a couple of main big stories. Um, first, let's talk a little bit about Adam Rose. Yes, Adam Rose. Um, what a completely crazy route. Um, he is, well, first things first. Um, let's start this, let's tie, uh, let's see. Um, his real name is Ray LePan, and, um, he was, Ray LePan, he was first suspended because of his wellness policy, the wellness policy by the WWE. Um, you know, 60 days for this, ad, I think it was uh, ADHD and such. He then tried to post doctor's notes and everything on Twitter. Which I didn't think go, go, went over well. First things first, he should have, I honestly say this, and I said it last time, and I'll say it again. If he had issues with this, he should have went with Vince. He should have talked to somebody in the corporate or whatever and say, this is what's happening and everything else. It would have been that way. It would have been easier. It would have been done. No harm, no foul. No fuss, no muss. You know? Yeah, you know that sort of thing. You, this should have been tendled behind closed doors. Then this thing happens. Um, as Ray Lepon was, uh, tamp- uh, was um, <clears throat> charged with a felony charge of tampering with a witness and a misdemeanor charge of domestic battery. And that made him completely be suspended indefinitely. He's basically been suspended indefinitely. And and here's the real thing. He um according to uh TMZ.com, he faced a jury uh in court. Link will be in the description, by the way. He was shackled and um in jail with an orange jumpsuit. Um, he says he is uh, for the court, and he says where his wife begged uh, and such. He said, um, he said, um, you know, there's been some issues with them, him and his wife. But the wife came to court and said, please just let him to come home. Uh, this argument got really, really, it was a really emotional argument. I think it it comes right here. And they said there was something like that. And during the hearing, Rose's wife said they have a special needs child who needs both their parents. And her lawyer herself says Rose's actions were not aggressive or painful, rather more of a passion. Something, you know, came out of passion. It was just an emotional outburst. He didn't mean to. And, and the, but also the judge mentioned a previous domestic violence incident back in March. And something like this happened, and well, I don't know. 
I'm not a person. I not wasn't there, but this does not look good for him. And his previous action shows he's might be a little bit more of this. I think there's a lot of stress going on for him right now. I, I don't think the social outcasts were really doing for him. He really had a great thing with ESPN and the WWE and Infinite Wisdom basically cut his knees off. We didn't see him after a while after that. Um, and then they put the social outcast on him. I think they were doing something with that. I think maybe he was just frustrated. I don't know. I don't know. If I'm making excuses for him, I don't I don't want to sound like that because once you do this or you attack someone, uh, regardless of any types of, I mean, when you do something like this, um, attacked, assaulting his wife in there, and it's not, that that's something you cannot be tolerated. And there's, and there is a previous history of this, a previous history of his assaults. So the question is, but then again, his wife is saying that he does not want to have a restraining order, but yet in the end, she doesn't get a restraining order. So, you know, this is something is right here, um, is I think the reason why she's trying, I think some people are saying this, like, well, why is she doing this for his job? Like, maybe she really cares for him. And add on to the fact that he did have a special needs kid that probably does have really, really, like, these, like, because if they have a special needs child, those medical bills, and if those medical bills are just so, hard, they, they are just so, you know, they, they cost too much. I mean, they are staggered at this state, you know, and they want to keep themselves together because they both need, they can't, it is, like, really hard for them to, because special needs children need extra care, extra love, and I don't know, this might, you know, if this is a very volatile relationship, because I don't think that helps the child anyway, even if they're special needs or not, living in a household where there's domestic violence, um, if there's a pattern of domestic violence, it's not going to be healthy for the child, even if they are special needs or not. So, I don't know what this person, or what they're trying to do. I don't know what they need to do to help this this, uh, um, this uh, uh, situation, because this right here is a very emotional type of uh, struggle. This is a very personal type of struggle. This is something that, uh, this is something that these, um, that, that the um, law. Lo- that the that the lawyers, uh, lawyers can be off too, but hopefully that um, that they're um, uh, you know Adam Rose and his his wife um, Ray um, yeah uh, his wife uh, him and his uh, wife and such um, Ray uh, Ray Lepan, um, Ray Lepan and his wife can get get together and hopefully and I'm really hopeful that he you know they can find a really cause solution here and as for him with WWE I don't know I don't know what they're going to do here because this looks really bad right now I mean they just got these new new deals like these uh, these deals they can't really hire him right now They maybe they'll wait till the heat goes off but I don't know right now. It, it does seem that his wife is not saying that she dropped the charges. And Adam Rose's uh, lawyer said they, they got the charges dropped. I don't know. Are they going to fire him? I have no idea at this point. Personally, I, I don't want to basically, um, you know, be a person to take someone's kid away. I'm not saying that or... Or, or something like this situation. Because I don't know. I, I really don't know what the situation. This is a very complex situation. I don't envy the WWE right now. Because if they have to. Because there's a lot of things. This, they, they have a lot of fires to put out. <laughs> Good uh, ratings and everything else. And all the stuff. And injuries. This 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 right here is probably another thing they got put out. And I think they're going to fire him. As sort of example. And it sucks for his kids. It sucks for... It's why it sucks for his dream, and it's gone now, and it really does suck. And I, I, um, I hope that um, Ray um, Le Pen and um, his wife, you know, fix their issues. I really hope he gets the help he needs. I hope his that child gets the help he needs as well. And that's that's the one thing I have. I just hope that they can, you know, improve and become better. That is what I want them. To, I want them to become better 
uh, a better, uh, better people at the end of the day. Well, that's enough of me um, soapboxing. I know people will be like, oh, this stupid man and stuff like that, but I, I, I had to get that stuff out there. Uh, yeah. Ah, uh, well, that was fun. <laughs> uh, we're going to take a small little break here. Afterwards, um, we will be um, <clears throat> talking a little about the WWE releases as well and other shocks and things like that. So uh, we'll be right back right after this here on the Duke City Lounge on TalkSue.com. Thank you so much for joining me, Duke C. <laughs> Enjoy the song, ladies and gentlemen, as we proceed to give you what you need. <laughs> we're going to talk a little about the WWE releases, and even though supposedly there might be even more releases after Extreme Rules, so yeah, that's that's uh, terrible. So let's take a look at the, re- the the releases, ladies and gentlemen, and see how you know the. Um, the releases and such here. So, Zeb Coulter, who was the manager of Zack Swagger and um, uh, Cesaro for the Real, Real Americans. Great thing, but they couldn't do anything with him because Zack Swagger screwed up with his weed type stuff and they really didn't know what to do with him. Uh, yeah, he's a great talker. I wish they could have done some more stuff with him. Wish in a backstage role, but yeah, at the end of the day, they couldn't really do much for him. So, yeah. Um, El Torito, shame. Uh, there was not much they could do. Ed Hornswoggle, not much to do with either of them. I mean, a wee little C match was people saying it was funny. I was like, well, yeah. Unless the W was going to do a genius division, that was pretty much it. I, did, I mean, there was nothing else you could do with them. They were just out there and um, nothing really. You know, I'm like, I think it was not really surprising for that. Santino Morella, he wasn't doing much anyway. He was just there. I, I always thought he was released earlier. I was like, man, he didn't do anything up there. He just, um, he hasn't been really relevant to WWE for quite a while. So, honestly, I'm surprised he hasn't took, I mean, he was more focusing on his um, uh, uh, MMA dojo, I think, in Canada. So, he's chill right there. Cameron? After she had that little bit of um, talking about what happened on um, uh, with Ryback stuff, I'm not really surprised. But even before that, I'm not surprised. They haven't done much with her. Um, she was good when they were part of the Funkadactyls. But after that, I don't, with Naomi, which WWE completely just, I don't know why they don't really care about her uh, anymore. I wish they can give her another, I wish they can give her a run with a title just once. That'd be nice. I don't care. Just just give her like a nice little token run. Hmm. But then again, um, I'm in the rule of not everyone can be champion. So, hey, you know, but that's another story for another time. Uh, but yeah, Cameron, no, 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 I'm not really care for it. I'm okay with, I mean, okay, I'm okay with Cameron not being, um, being released as uh, Alex Riley, someone who, didn't do much. I mean, his last match was against um, Nakamura, and then he got his then he got his knee in Nakamura's face. That was his last appearance on WWE TV. I was a fan of Alex Riley a couple years ago. I thought his match with the Miz was good. I thought it was really good storytelling. I thought the WWE could have done more with him. Maybe a nice little mid card run, but in the end, he didn't do much. I think he was a, a decent NXT commentator. Nothing good, nothing bad, but. Alex Riley, still youngish, 
Maybe there's hope for him to come back as a commentator. Maybe there's hope for him to become the next, you know. You know there's somewhere, if he really wants to continue to be a wrestler, there's sure some indies that will sign him and, and whatever. So, yeah. I think Alex Riley, um, you know, not much really needs to be said about Alex Riley. A guy that could have been something, but not really. Surprisingly, well, King Bear. Bear was already out the door anyway. I like the fact that he um, that he was um, that he was just made like he you know he was part of the team that won at WrestleMania and now that that unit the League of Nations and then the League of Nations and no more. <laughs> oh, that's great. Also, they did do anything with him. A, a guy who was cut with um, he was getting popular with the bad news. So what they do? They stopped letting him do the bad news bear gimmick. They didn't like that, so they made King Barrett, and they did nothing with him, making the King of the Ring completely and utterly pointless. Made it even more pointless when Sheamus won it. <laughs> he was the most irrelevant King ever. But yeah, Barrett was not going to stay there anyway, so he was like, you know what? I'm done. I, I'm leaving this stuff. So maybe they're gonna come back. I don't know. But then was Damian Sandow, and he did everything he could. The crowd liked him. Everyone out there, I wasn't really surprised because, let's be real, WWE wasn't, didn't know what to do with Sandow. But at the end of the day, he still was a former tag team champ, so I guarantee you get some run in the indies and stuff like that. Hopefully he can do something better for um, you know, someone else pick him up. Uh, maybe Lucha Underground since he's does well with these type of gimmicks, and that's a gimmick heavy show. Ring of Honor, I don't know. TNA, there's no one out there. TNA's dead. But I think Damian Sandow would be a very interesting way. You know, I think he'll be just fine as well. I think it sucks, but the WWE didn't do anything. They did not do anything with, um, with these characters. And then. A week later. We had one of the bold school ones. Steve Lombardi. A.K.A. the Brooklyn Brawler. It's been released. About the WWE. Um, a couple of days ago. I think it was it was a shock. A lot of people were like. Wow. Brooklyn Brawler. You know. It sucks. And then not only. Um. You know, I'm I'm here. I I still. Um, I still think he's gonna be just. Um, you know, it's shocking because the behind the scenes. He was really, really a big hand for behind the scenes. So yeah. Um, and also, another one quietly released on his wrestling deal, Christian. Um, Christian is now officially retired. He, there's no more one more match. Even though he did win the Intercontinental last matches I saw, he did win an IC title contention thing. So, yeah. Um, but here's the real thing, ladies and gentlemen, about these uh, shakeups. Um, you know, these, these things. Um, you know, they're these type of things. Um, It's um something that um uh people are worried about like other oh, releases. Look, there there's um a lot of people are like, well, do WWE has none for him. And it sucks that it does. I mean heck, I wish I could say the writers should be fired because if they can't find nothing for him, it's basically because of the writing staff. I mean there's I mean that's nothing from heck, I look at what they have on the raw roster now, they have nothing to do with them. I mean Quite seriously, there's no stories right now for well, for or anything else. The only stories are half baked stories where the crowd doesn't give a less than an f about Roman Reigns and his family and the crap of the club with AJ Styles and and whatever those two uh, goof goofballs uh, are with them. You know, there's no stories. There's no one to really get attached to. The last time people really felt attachment were two wrestlers, CM Punk and Daniel Bryan. There's no attachment to any of these stars. People say, you know, and they say, well, and now they're putting NXT stars. Like, you know, with no type of introduction, no anything else, 
or anything like that. There's no attachment. There's no attachment to these stuff. The only people right now who does have any type of attachment are the New Day. Pretty much that's it. Everything else is just... Duh, just, just die. Just, just there. Nothing. There's legitimately nothing that people can care about. And it's interesting. And let's see. About something. And it comes from the pro boards... Now, for, no, no, it's come from the freaking Austin awesome Network forums. Yes, I'm, you know, shout out there. Cheat pop. <laughs> um, they will actually have a little bit of something that I really, really um, is, is the attitude. You see, looking back at the attitude. And I'll put a link in the description. But also right here is something... Um, right, I mean, look for it, is right here. It says, quote, it was from Dark Journey, and here it is, I'll put the post right here for you. It says, quote, I think the main difference between the two eras, rock and wrestling and attitude, and this one, you just have people in the back with a pulse on what the hell society wanted in terms of entertainment from their wrestling programs. The problem today is Vince is too old and out of touch with reality, and those below him, Triple H and Stephanie, I just don't have... I just don't feel they have a firm grip on what society wants. Triple H wants to appeal to that certain hardcore work rate demographic of fans. Thing is, these people will probably watch wrestling regardless of how crappy it gets. Their vision will never appeal to the masses. WrestleMania will always probably be a draw because it's WrestleMania. But the days of the business being public in, I just don't see it unless they re totally retool the management and creative scene with people with a firm grasp on what's going to draw. People outside the wrestling bubble, if you will, Vince, Triple H, Stephanie Haynes, etc., has been, yeah, they need people outside the wrestling bubble, uh, people outside the wrestling bubble, wrestling bubble, if you will. Vince, Triple H, Stephanie Haynes, etc., has been entrenched in the bubble too long. It's okay, it's okay if you just want to keep your substandard hardcore group of fans, but the interest will probably never venture out to new groups of fans. It's why you have see, only seen the WWE business stagnate or decrease. Never truly approved since over a decade now. <laughs> and right here in another post, the best to see from Smack Talker Skywalker. Love that from and your fan right there, probably is. Um, <clears throat> the best year, and I'll put the post right here and the link of the post right in the description of the YouTube channel. You'll see it, the post here is right here. So, mm. The best year of the Attitude Era was 2000. They moved away from all the bad stuff and focused on the better elements of it. In fact, it's probably the best year in WF slash E history. The television in uh, the uh, WF slash WE history. The television in every aspect was light years ahead of where it is now. Episodes of Raw and SmackDown can be watched standalone. They have a storyline that was specific to that episode that actually progressed in a way that something on the drama show would do and then tied it into a larger story. It felt like a TV show with different locations and stuff. Right now, it's just some basic shit that happens in the ring, and then loads of shots of people having conversations stood sideways in the same room with a curtain behind them. They also had a stellar roster that year. The matches were the right length, where now they're too long, and in the add to their worst part, they were too short. Comedy at its best, comedy was at its best too. Edge, Christian, Kurt Ang Edge, Christian, and Kurt Angle are just three of the many standouts. It still holds up today, whereas late 98 and 99 are effing awful. Early 98 is still quite decent as well. Come to think of it, it's telling the year after Russo left is the best year year in part of 98 where it seems like he had less room to do some of his stupid, st stupid stuff was the better part of the year. And that's to me, really is true. And, you know... It's something that is that the WWE really needs to start this whole. They need to be more in touch and also have to be less hands on. But I don't see that. I don't see that as the WWE continues to be this way. I really wish that the WWE could could continue to grow 
and become better. But it just, it's this frustrating thing that they just have this old school mindset and then they fire the wrestlers for doing what they ask <laughs> and, and not be relevant and fire them because they're not relevant. <laughs> uh, it's it's funny Real funny <sighs> Well Anyway I hope for everyone Who got, got released lands on their feet And who knows Maybe WWE will call them back in a couple years When they're feeling people feeling nostalgic for that <laughs> Anyway Thank you so much for listening To the Dig City Lounge this week Hopefully we'll be back live On TalkShoe.com next week So Here's hoping. Anyway, it's Duke CT here. Peace, love, see y'all when I see y'all later.